Well, hello everybody and welcome to another review. Now, today's review has been made possible by the lovely donation from our good friend, Dr. David Goldman. Uh, thank you again, David, for your support for the channel. Um, your last donation, wow, thank you so much. That's really gonna help me and keep a few reviews coming as well. So with that donation from Dr. David Goldman, his link will be down below for his YouTube channel. And I would highly recommend, nay, I will actually demand that you go look at his YouTube channel, subscribe and like and enjoy the good stuff he's got on there. He does some really wonderful presentations, some night nice stunners. The last trick he done with the two decks totally blew me away and that very good. So yes, Dr. David Goldman, please pause this video, go down, click like, subscribe. Thank you, I do appreciate it. So today we are back at the 1914 stable as per usual. We are going to be looking at Perplexions by the wonderful Adam Dadswell. Yes, he has brought us a little bit of card magic into the mentalism world. Now there is a few train of thoughts about that. I'm going to leave that to the end. Let's get on with the review itself because I know a lot of you guys will probably be wanting to know what did we do? What did we think? Does it work? Is it good? Is it bad? The usual things, of course. So, of course, like all the wonderful uh, 1940 videos, we do get the introduction uh, where he introduces himself, his qualifications. Obviously, he's a professional magician, he's a worker, he's a card guy, but he's also getting into the murky world of mentalism as well. And what he's basically done is taken some classic card tricks and turned them into mentaliz mentalism presentations. I can't speak. Mentalism presentations. Ah, oh dear. Anybody think I do this for a living? So, uh, the first part he does is the missing piece. I'm just going to pop my notes here because I've got notes on the tablet and I've got written down notes as well. I didn't get a chance to actually um, put these onto the tablet. So, these are actually, yeah, I'm old school. Just to give you guys a little bit, I do write on paper. <laughs> Sorry. I just find it so much easier. I shouldn't have done that. It's just changed the exposure. Oh, I just knocked the table as well. Oh, earthquake. So, um, first piece we see is the missing piece now this is an effect um where basically against the odds the spectator finds the missing piece to the puzzle using of course deck of cards uh this one i kind of like now there was a live performance they've done the format slightly different here it's live performance then straight into the actual explanation of the trick it's not actually split it's all in the same file so you've got a little you can download each file and you'll have your live and then you'll have your explanations as well which is really good uh, so for this one, it was done uh, live in the street, which is really nice. It's basically a four of a kind, 11 minute video, including the training as well. Very simple piece, but very well done. And also it, to me, it almost has like opener written on it as well. So basically, you know, you're going through and getting something to find, you know, you're getting four and where you go. And um, you've got like a little envelope comes out, you've got four of the other cards and they picked that card that fix, fixes the puzzle basically. So kind of like a, a found card effect, but done in a mentalism as a puzzle mentalism. So not a bad little opener actually, I didn't mind it too much. Um, they do do another version of this afterwards, which is an impromptu version of this as well. So again, four of a kind, you're making four of a kind, they're picking the card. <gasps> Somehow they knew even before seeing it, it was there. And this is done basically on the fly. So yeah, you'll find it so you don't need the special little black envelope. And it's not a special envelope by the way, it's just a normal black envelope with three cards in it. Easy setup, easy carry, good to go at a moment's notice. But they do an impromptu version, so if somebody hands you a deck of cards and goes, hey, magic boy, show me some tricks, he will show you a very effective method of doing it from a shuffled deck of cards that may be handed to you. So I do like the, a lot of these effects. Workers, basically, as I call them. Uh, then we have, of course, the Mental Trio. Now, this one I actually <laughs> kind of liked. Um, it's a clever one. It uses a very old... Uh, process that I'd actually kind of forgotten about but actually still use to this day key card but it's done with three people and the way it's done three people lined up uh, each handing a little deck you know you split the deck into parts you know minis and they obviously do a few instructions and lo and behold you find all three of their choices uh, you know it's a finder card but it's done with three people and it's done under almost test conditions and the actual moves very minimal, uh, does require a little bit of setup before you start. But again, with some of these tricks, you can 
you know, as you're going for a deck of cards, if somebody's handed you a deck of cards, you can move stuff around. There are ways of doing it. Uh, with this one, very simple setup. You can carry this ready on your deck pretty much any time you want to go. And boom, you can take three people and basically read their minds. Oh, magic. But yeah, I did that on the and that's a live one as well. Again, another one with live performances. Uh, there is actually a little safety bit there as well. Uh, let me just quickly run back over to these notes as well. Um, and there's actually, he does an extra video on this one to get you out of stick. If something goes wrong, if somebody forgets a card, you know, and they're like, so I like the fact that they've thought, you know, three people, chance of one person not quite remembering their card. So they do a little safety training video, safety training video, the exits are here, here, and here. Uh, but it's to help you if something goes wrong and how to think on your feet. And he actually had to do that. And they actually have a live performance, which is really good of it actually not going wrong, then forgetting the card and how Adam turns it around and does a little sneaky thing. So yeah. I did like that. So it's nice when, he, when things go wrong, they show you what to do. So after that, we have the imagination game. Um, this is a, I want to say, again, live performance, which was really good, about 40 minutes on the video. Um, it's basically, um, I want to say, a mentalist version of the Chicago opener almost. Uh, it does use an extra card. So here you will need to... Um, find different color backs or perhaps get a duplicate card and mark it in some way to make it unique and it's basically Chicago opener but done in the mentalist style as well and that one I really liked as well I get another sort of quick snappy opener as well which is really nice um does require a little bit of the old hand manipulation so again if you've got and I'm going to get into this actually I'll get to that towards the end um but what they actually do for that one is they actually give you a gimmicked version as well so after you've learned the full sleight of hand version there's a gimmick version uh, which does simplify the process immensely and takes out two of the difficult moves but it does leave you with a gimmick card the gimmick card itself um i think they could have gone over just a little bit more detail on how to make it it is really simple to make if you've got mark wilson's complete course in magic you can find how to make it in there but it's actually quite simple but i think they could have just uh, gone over that with just a little bit more detail but if you've already done magic and you're getting into mentalism, then it's going to be something you probably already know, which I think so. That's not too bad. But the idea of using the gimmick does make a lot of sense and does make it easier. Right, I've now lost my place as I'm chatting away to you guys. And that's called, sorry, that was called Information Void Gimmicked. So uh, Information Void and Information Void Gimmicked. Now, the next one is called the Connection Test. Uh, I need to go onto a new page. Yeah, here we go, the Connection Test. Um, this is probably my favorite from this because when I watched it, it did actually fool me, um, which is not difficult to do. I don't know that much, um, but it's a kind of do as I do. But in this, you do need a full deck setup of the Stye Stebbing Stack, which they do go over in some detail on how the Stye Stebbing Stack works. And this is a lovely multiple um, you and a I think I can see this as a mid-range trick as well. It's 22 minutes long. There's any important performance doesn't take too long. Uh, most of it's taken up by going through how Stye Stebbins works. Uh, they do recommend information. I think um, they do mention Craig Petty's uh, Stye Stebbins project as well as something to go over to give you more information. And uh, if you see, so yeah, uh, they do teach full shuffle as well. And so you can set your deck up in Stye Stebbins, pull your deck out and go straight into this effect. And it looks really good. And I know a lot of car works will say, well, it's just normal. But we're, again, there's some bits at the end I'm going to get into. So that I really did like. And there's a live performance, teachings. And I believe D Christopher comes into this one as well. And D helps with some of the explanations. And uh, I think they could have done with bringing D in more with the explanation videos. But again, something towards the end. So after the wonderful dish, we have a couple of these. These are just done in the studio as extras. Um, there's one is called the Mental Ambitious Card. Um, if you've done Ambitious Card, I know a lot of card workers swear by Ambitious Card. This is not a signed version. Uh, this is a multiple... Uh, uh, magician's choice magician's force kind of style one where you can take the two cards and whichever one they mention will pop to the top of the deck so it does take the ambitious card and give it that slight mental twist i like that one as well right so after mental ambitions we have three decisions later uh, this is a uh, eight minute video uh, again this is a multiple out which he uh, the former uses his wallet and his phone case I think you can get, if it's a kind of uh, equivalent 
you know, I don't want to give away too much that's giving away the trick, but basically using a bit of equivé, equivé, whatever they call it, you know, making people, taking the words and as they change, change them around. Uh, that's used in here as well, and it has multiple outs in a wallet and a phone. Uh, more of a setup on this one, but as he says, it's more of his sat in the pub, chatting with friends. This is a trick he will do, but you could do it commercially. I don't see any reason why not. And then after that, three decisions later, we have the uh, utility move. So here... This is an area that I do want to speak on, and I think I need to qualify. Uh, basically, these are a, uh, a full shuffle and a card control, which look very similar, uh, almost like a slop shuffle. So you're moving cards in and out, round and round, back and forth, which is good. Uh, that's only six mid long, and uh, those aren't, aren't those utility moves aren't really used in the effects, but they can be applied to it. However, I think they wasted an opportunity on this section of it, uh, mainly because. Uh, they could have put a lot of the other teachings in there. I think they could have taken things like half pass, uh, double lift, just in case people don't know them. Chances are they probably do. And they could have put the extra moves all in there as well. So you'd have like a one one video file where, okay, double lift. Oh, oh I see. Oh, uh, half pass. Not done one of those before. Ah, it's on there. They could have put a bit more in there. But that's just me personally. And obviously then we get to the outro, which he's, where he says, thank you, good night, and uh, good luck in your endeavours. So yeah, uh, about two hours in total, I think the whole lot works out too. Uh, again, it's one of those ones I start to lose track of time a little bit because I was watching it and really enjoying it, and then obviously stopping, grabbing some cards. Thank you for the die cards. And using those in there as well. So what you basically have here is uh, we can now go over the uh, synopsis, summary, whatever you want to call it. Well, what we have here is a good collection of good strong effects, definitely strong effects. Um, I think a lot of card guys will probably know a lot of these already. So I think that is going to get called out that people are going to say, well, these are existing effects, there's nothing new here. Uh, they're new in the fact of the way that um, Adam has taken these classics and worked them into a mentalist mold. So yes, so you can actually uh, have some fun with those. So I'm just going to grab the cards out because I, I fancy shuffling cards today. So yeah, so uh, it means that basically, uh, like I say, a couple of the effects do require setup. So that means you will have to have your deck in snebbins. Uh, most of them can be done impromptu or even with a borrowed deck. But if you've got your own deck, of course, as you are a magician, well, you were a magician, but now you're a mentalist, um, you will now have a deck of cards there. You may need a couple of extra cards as well. And um, in terms of what cards you use, um, I think there it's basically open to you. So if you want to use bridge style cards, if you want to use their Providence cards like I tend to do, or if you want to use your, your favorite Mark's deck, because maybe the Mark deck gets used once in a blue moon, uh, because I think most mentalists tend to have this as a backup. Um, here you can actually bring your cards in a little bit more to mentalism, which will lead me to the next thing. And uh, this is something that I think some, mentalists have a problem with is I have noticed and obviously reading through Magic Bunny um, uh, all the usual forums that there was or did seem to be a thing of if you are a mentalist uh, if you are a mentalist magician you know, if you are just a mentalist you don't have these apparently there were some mentalists out there that were saying that no there's no room for cards in mentalism that's for the fancy magician guys I think that's wrong. I think cards do have a place in mentalism. Again, depending on your character, the structure of your show. Um, and if you come from, a, like me, come from a magic background, you're gonna have a little bit of skill with cards anyway. I mean, I'm not a huge, I'm not Daniel Madison. You know, I don't have the ability to stretch my fingers in weird combinations and perform maneuvers that would break a normal person's fingers. Um, if you've got a good range of basic slights, then you can actually um, do these as well, so yeah. So overall, um, if we get away from the mentalism versus playing cards, uh, who's this aimed at? I think that's what you guys have been waiting for. Why should I buy this? Um, there's going to be a few little things here I'm going to have to expand on. Uh, one is if you've already had experience with playing cards or know quite a lot of card tricks, a lot of this you're going to know. Uh, you're going to just go, oh, that's Chicago opener or oh, that's just the four of a kind where you somehow get the, you know, the the missing four of a kind in there. So you may already have knowledge of these. However, the way they've been restructured for mentalism may be unique to you. Um, and like I say, for 20 pounds, I think even if you do know the tricks on here, the way they're being taught and presented, I think you will benefit from definitely. I know I did, there was a few tricks on there. And there's always a way you buy 
a collection of magic or DVDs or mentalism, there was always going to be those little choice ones that you really like, and it's the same with anything. But I don't think there's any wasted effects on here. Um, I like the idea of using the stepping stack as part of a mentalism idea as well, which would be brilliant. And uh, you know, all in all, I really, really enjoyed it. I mean, it's nothing new, uh, but the way it's been done is. And again, of course, the 1914, it was shot well, it was mic'd well. There's live performances, which are really good. So you get to see spectators' reactions, how they work with the spectators. So I think live performances are very important. And the teaching was really, really good. But my only negative is they could have taken and this is unusual for the 1914, they could have taken uh, the moves that are needed and put those into the uh, utility move file, the bit where it teaches you that slop shuffle and slop, like a weird sort of topsy-turvy shuffle and topsy-turvy sort of force, uh, or control, sorry, not force, it was control of card. So you just go through, spread it, and then you go blah, 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 and it gets it to the top of the deck, which can be used with some of the other effects. And I think, you know, it would have been nice if that could have been expanded upon. Uh, so basically, I'm saying in the utility section, they should have covered the things that you use. Double lift, uh, turnover, half pass, Herman pass, half turn pass. The one way where you turn the deck over, you basically do a pass, which is an easy one to do, let's be honest. And they could have just expanded some of the moves on there and the making of the gimmick. Um, the gimmick itself is easy for the uh, other version of the missing piece. Uh, but they could have at least done a close-up of how to put it together and how it needs to be cut and glued, even though it is super simple. And if anybody really does want that, um, there's plenty of processes out there. They do explain that there's a lot of other stuff out there that can help you. So all in all, I really liked it. I think it's definitely worth the £20. I think a lot of mentalists will take from this what they need. Uh, I think a lot of card people, again, will be will probably know most of this information, but the presentation is well worth learning. So for me, it gets a two thumbs up. And... Uh, Go and buy it and enjoy it and bring some cards into your mentalism. And again, I have to say a big, big thank you to Dr. David Goldman for uh, helping to donate and get these uh, reviews done. Go Again, he will have a link down there as well. Please, 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 mandatory. If you don't subscribe to him, I will come to your house. I will sneak onto your computer and I'll do it for you. So there you go. So then, guys, have a lovely, lovely day. I'll catch you all very soon. And so until then, bye-bye. I better turn this off. Ciao.